Segment 1, Introduction to the Corpus Callosum 1 Introduction The Corpus Callosum is a large white matter tract that connects the two hemispheres of the brain. It is the largest commissural fiber bundle in the brain, and it contains over 200 million nerve fibers. The corpus callosum is located in the center of the brain, between the two cerebral hemispheres. It is approximately 10 centimeters long and 1 centimeter wide. The corpus callosum is divided into four main parts, the rostrum, genu, body, and splenium. The rostrum is the anterior most part of the corpus callosum, and it connects the two frontal lobes. The genu is the knee-shaped bend in the corpus callosum, and it connects the two parietal lobes. The body is the longest part of the corpus callosum, and it connects the two temporal lobes. The splenium is the posterior most part of the corpus callosum, and it connects the two occipital lobes. The corpus callosum is essential for interhemispheric communication. It allows the two hemispheres of the brain to communicate with each other and to share information. This is important for a variety of cognitive functions, such as attention, memory, language, and visual-spatial processing. The corpus callosum also plays a role in motor control. It allows the two hemispheres of the brain to coordinate their movements. This is important for activities such as walking, talking, and writing. The corpus callosum is a vital structure in the human brain. Damage to the corpus callosum can lead to a variety of cognitive and neurological impairments. For example, people with corpus callosum damage may have difficulty with attention, memory, language, and visual-spatial processing. They may also have difficulty with motor control. The corpus callosum is a fascinating structure that is still not fully understood. Researchers are continuing to learn about the role of the corpus callosum in cognition, motor control, and other brain functions. Segment 2, The Corpus Callosum and Cognition the corpus callosum plays a role in a variety of cognitive functions, including Attention, the corpus callosum allows the two hemispheres of the brain to attend to different things at the same time. This is important for tasks such as driving, reading, and listening to a conversation. Memory, the corpus callosum allows the two hemispheres of the brain to share information and to encode and retrieve memories. This is important for all types of memory, including short-term memory, long-term memory, and episodic memory. Language, the corpus callosum allows the two hemispheres of the brain to communicate with each other and to process language. This is important for tasks such as speaking, reading, and writing. Visual-spatial processing, the corpus callosum allows the two hemispheres of the brain to work together to process visual and spatial information. This is important for tasks such as navigating through space, reading maps, and solving puzzles. Damage to the corpus callosum can lead to a variety of cognitive impairments, including Attention deficits. People with corpus callosum damage may have difficulty paying attention and focusing on tasks. They may also have difficulty shifting their attention from one task to another. Memory problems. People with corpus callosum damage may have difficulty encoding and retrieving memories. They may also have difficulty remembering information that is presented to one hemisphere of the brain. Language deficits. People with corpus callosum damage may have difficulty speaking, reading, and writing. They may also have difficulty understanding language. Visual spatial processing problems. People with corpus callosum damage may have difficulty navigating through space, reading maps, and solving puzzles. The severity of cognitive impairments caused by corpus callosum damage depends on the location and extent of the damage. People with damage to the anterior corpus callosum are more likely to have attention and memory problems, while people with damage to the posterior corpus callosum are more likely to have language and visual-spatial processing problems. Research on the corpus callosum and cognition is ongoing. Researchers are continuing to learn about the specific roles of different parts of the corpus callosum in different cognitive functions. They are also developing new treatments to help people with corpus callosum damage improve their cognitive function. Segment 3, the corpus callosum and neurological disorders. The corpus callosum is involved in a variety of neurological disorders, including multiple sclerosis. MSMS is a chronic inflammatory disease that affects the central nervous system. In MS, the myelin sheath that insulates nerve fibers is damaged. 
This damage can disrupt communication between the two hemispheres of the brain, and it can lead to a variety of neurological symptoms, including cognitive impairments, motor deficits, and sensory problems. Stroke. A stroke occurs when the blood supply to the brain is interrupted. This can damage or kill brain tissue, and it can lead to a variety of neurological symptoms, depending on the area of the brain that is affected. Strokes that damage the corpus callosum can lead to a variety of cognitive impairments, including attention deficits, memory problems, and language deficits. Traumatic brain injury, TBI TBI, is a type of brain damage that is caused by a blow to the head. TBIs can range in severity from mild to severe. Mild TBIs, such as concussions, can cause temporary symptoms such as headache, dizziness, and nausea. Severe TBIs can cause permanent neurological damage, including cognitive impairments, motor deficits, and sensory problems. TBIs that damage the corpus callosum can lead to a variety of cognitive impairments, including attention deficits, memory problems, and language deficits. In addition to these three neurological disorders, the corpus callosum is also involved in a number of other neurological disorders, such as autism, schizophrenia, and epilepsy. Research on the role of the corpus callosum in these disorders is ongoing. Corpus callosum imaging and stimulation. Corpus callosum imaging and stimulation are two techniques that are being used to study the corpus callosum and its role in neurological disorders. Corpus callosum imaging techniques, such as MRI and diffusion tensor imaging, DTI, can be used to identify damage to the corpus callosum and to measure the thickness and integrity of the corpus callosum. This information can be used to diagnose neurological disorders and to track the progression of these disorders over time. Corpus callosum stimulation techniques, such as transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, and non-invasive deep brain stimulation, NIBS, can be used to modulate the activity of the corpus callosum. These techniques are being investigated as potential treatments for a variety of neurological disorders, including MS, stroke, and TBI. Research on corpus callosum imaging and stimulation is ongoing. Researchers are working to develop new and better ways to use these techniques to study the corpus callosum and to treat neurological disorders. Segment 4, the corpus callosum and development. The corpus callosum begins to develop early in embryogenesis at around 12 weeks of gestation. It continues to develop throughout childhood and adolescence, and it is not fully mature until the early 20s. The development of the corpus callosum can be divided into three main stages. Axon growth. The first stage involves the growth of axons from one hemisphere of the brain to the other. These axons cross the midline and form the corpus callosum. Myelination. The second stage involves the myelination of the axons in the corpus callosum. Myelin is a fatty substance that insulates nerve fibers and helps them to transmit signals more efficiently. Pruning. The third stage involves the pruning of excess axons in the corpus callosum. This pruning process ensures that the corpus callosum is efficient and that it can transmit signals quickly and accurately. The development of the corpus callosum is influenced by a variety of factors, including genetics, nutrition, and environmental factors. For example, children who are malnourished or who are exposed to certain toxins during pregnancy are at increased risk for corpus callosum abnormalities. Corpus callosum abnormalities can lead to a variety of cognitive and neurological impairments. For example, children with corpus callosum abnormalities may have difficulty with attention, memory, language, and visuospatial processing. They may also have difficulty with motor control, developmental disorders, and the corpus callosum. A number of developmental disorders, such as autism and schizophrenia, are associated with corpus callosum abnormalities. In autism, the corpus callosum is often thinner than it is in typically developing children. This suggests that people with autism may have difficulty communicating between the two hemispheres of their brain. In schizophrenia, the corpus callosum is often larger than it is in typically developing adults. This suggests that people with schizophrenia may have too much communication between the two hemispheres of their brain. Research on the corpus callosum and developmental disorders is ongoing. Researchers are working to understand the role of the corpus callosum in these disorders and to develop new treatments. Conclusion The corpus callosum is a vital structure in the developing brain. 
abnormalities in the corpus callosum can lead to a variety of cognitive and neurological impairments. Researchers are continuing to learn about the role of the corpus callosum in development and disease. Segment 5, Conclusion and Future Directions The corpus callosum is a fascinating structure that plays a vital role in interhemispheric communication and cognitive function. Damage to the corpus callosum can lead to a variety of cognitive and neurological impairments. Research on the corpus callosum is ongoing, and there are a number of exciting new directions for future research. For example, researchers are interested in developing new and better ways to use corpus callosum imaging and stimulation to study and treat neurological disorders. Researchers are also interested in learning more about the role of the corpus callosum in development and developmental disorders. Here are some specific questions that researchers are working to answer. How does the corpus callosum develop and mature? What are the specific roles of different parts of the corpus callosum in different cognitive functions? How does damage to the corpus callosum lead to cognitive and neurological impairments? Can corpus callosum imaging and stimulation be used to improve cognitive function in people with neurological disorder? What role does the corpus callosum play in development and developmental disorders? Answering these questions will help us to better understand the corpus callosum and its role in brain function. This knowledge could lead to new and better treatments for a variety of neurological disorders. Future directions for research on the corpus callosum. In addition to the specific questions listed above, there are a number of other exciting directions for future research on the corpus callosum. For example, researchers are interested in developing new and better ways to image the corpus callosum in vivo. Stimulate the corpus callosum non-invasively. Model the corpus callosum using computational methods. Develop new drugs and therapies that target the corpus callosum. These new technologies and approaches will allow researchers to study the corpus callosum in more detail and to develop new and better treatments for a variety of neurological disorders. The corpus callosum is a complex and important structure in the brain. By continuing to research the corpus callosum, we can learn more about how it works and how to treat disorders that affect it.